Podquester time now it is Podquester time Hello friends. We are so excited to be with you today. I'm Susie G and I have with me today Tommy, Tommy Pazula, also known as Tommy Pizza, also known as the original murderer. Ooh, I have the other original murderer with me too. Where? Still wearing that purple, still rocking the purple, Oprah. <laughs> so we will wow, you just threw that baby. You just she threw your baby. Oh no. <laughs> Once a murderer, always a murderer. <laughs> so you'll have some unique perspectives on this episode for sure. Yeah, I feel for Billy, you know, as as a fellow murderer, I know what it's like to have all that pressure on your shoulders. So Well, I'll be watching for y'all in a future mini or game or something for remaining your murderers alliance. Um <laughs> I think murder is strong. Though you and Billy seem to have a little bit of a different take on it, right? You did not like being the murderer. Billy reveled in it. Uh. Yeah, like for me, it was like, oh man, all this blood is on my hands. I, there's no soap around. How am I going to get this off? And all my friends are now sad. It was a whole experience for me, but no, yeah. Billy seemed to. Yeah, she got the she got the moody lighting too. She got that red light. She did. She got she got to kind of soak in it. Uh, she enjoyed it. She said, "More blood, please." Um, <laughs> but let's start at the top of the episode. Um, we got this great flashback to the last episode, uh, which was nice. We kind of catch you up and go over some of the highlights, including some things we didn't see before, like Billy's perspective. Um, like the fact that Billy is the one who told Josh that it was Katie who who kind of came for him. Uh, I think the theme of this episode, even though it says dead to me, is really Billy is a snake. percent. <laughs> yeah, Billy, I mean, with the whole Josh thing, I mean, I think that Katie obviously was saying Josh's name, but hey, it uh, it helps when Billy's sitting there giving you that information. If I'm Josh, I'm like, thank you, Billy. Like, and it forms that connection. I mean, it's just again, Billy is is forming the connections while being a sneaky snake. Yeah, and I will also say, you know, it's interesting because we know that Shireen's the one who first started saying um, Josh's name, but. Josh doesn't have that information, so he is Team Shireen um, and Hentai Katie, which also Shireen is, so that helps put them more firmly in each other's camp. Uh, so Billy really solidified a line that Shireen was already drawing between herself and Katie by pushing Josh onto that side, too. Yeah, no, exactly. And, that, and it's almost, I feel like it's almost, there's like, I'm starting to piece together the, the relationships. Like, I feel like I have my board over here with my conspiracies everywhere. And uh, I feel like there's, like, loosely two sides, but, like, the two sides are commingling. There's, like, there's so much there's so much commingling going on. But I do think you have, like, the Katie – you ha have this, like, Katie side and almost this, like, Shireen-Josh side. But also, you know, we'll get into it, but I feel like Josh was doing well of trying to work with Katie – at least what he said to us, right? Like he said, you know, in this confessional, he goes, he goes, I think I should like bury the hat with her. I think to Marcel, I think he was talk talking to Marcel about that. Yeah, yeah. He mentioned to Marcel, hey, when Marcel is trying to clear the air, he's like, yeah, I want to clear the air with Katie too. Uh, Josh is trying to go back under the radar, which is funny because his personality is already so up that he can't. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you already turned him to a hundred. He's not going back down. Um, in fact, I love that line that he says when he's talking about coming back in. He says, they said that they don't know who I am and that's why I'm going in. And he said, if I have to teach some motherfuckers today, I was like, damn, he's like, I'm going to teach all of them. And I was like, he is going to teach some folks. Josh is amazing in confessionals, but he's also talking like he's in a confessional kind of the whole time he's in the house. Like everything he says is like singer, line, line, line. Like he's, and of course the word fuck. I never heard, I'm, take a drink every time Josh says fuck and you're done by like the first 20 minutes of this episode. You're out. 
<laughs> the thing about Josh is his confidence. It's like he came in here and was like, he he didn't. It's almost like he didn't get the memo that he didn't have connections. He almost came in and said, listen, I'm going to be the biggest deal this season. You're all going to learn. Like you said, I'm going to teach you if you don't already know. But he didn't need to be taught. He's like, I already know who I am. I'm confident in the fact that I am this person. And and that says a lot. I mean, it's, you can't fake that. <laughs> you, can't, you can't fake that kind of stuff. Something Louie and I talked about a little bit on the last one is that every guy came in here in our interviews, in the lost interviews, um, that saying – I'm going to be an alpha. I'm going to be an alpha. Josh is actually being that alpha. He is really not backing down to anyone. He's intimidating other people. He's going to come for you and he's going to win. Um, so I'm really impressed with Josh. I hate to say it because I hate to give Louie his props, but yeah, Josh Mosh, Josh Mosh Josh. right here. I feel like there needs to be like grungy t-shirts. I don't know, like Josh Mosh makes me think of like a mosh pit. So like you just have like grunge t-shirts and we're like moshing around for Josh. Yeah. Yeah, jo with Josh's face on him just going, fuck. <laughs> <"Hot." laughs> yeah. I'd wear it. Um, maybe. Maybe a sweatshirt. <laughs> it's cold here. But yeah, and then Josh comes out with an LOS. How do you feel about this new way of getting LOSs? Yeah, luxury row. I think it's called. It's uh, uh, it's interesting. I, I like it for two reasons. I, a, I like that they haven't told them that there's no LOS, so they just keep searching around like little badgers. Yeah. Makes me laugh. But I do like that it's like there's three opportunities. I will say two. If you listen, she said there will be. Or, uh, Sequester bot said there will be two powers necessarily it didn't say two LOSs. It didn't say you get right. an LOS or you get nothing. It was two powers. So I don't know what the other power is, but I want to find out. Yeah. I can't even imagine what the other power could be. Right. Um, safety. Like you can't be a flop. We've seen that kind of thing in a twist where you, you can't be put on the block um, or something like that for the next round. I just, I don't know. I'm a little sad that he got the LOS because I kind of wanted to see what the other one was. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but good for him for like, getting the LOS. <laughs> I like it better than like in, in past seasons. It's been, there's been a couple of times where it's like, oh, you won the battle match. Here's this LOS or, or doing things in the challenge. And it's like, oh, this tempting LOS on the side. I kind of like this better where it's like, it is a reward, but there is still some risk in the sense that you might just have nothing. You know, like it's like, it's like a Price is Right game. Yeah, I mean, but it's hard for me that you don't have an LOS until you go into a battle match. Because there's no way to preemptively save yourself. So, I like, I mean, I'd like to see it incorporated. And we don't know that this is the only way. I doubt this is the only way you can get an LOS. Who knows? Yeah. But... Um, we are just un as unknowledgeable as them. So there may be other ways. I kind of like them when they're incorporated in the challenge because I feel like you have to kind of give up something. It's a very risk reward situation. It reminds me of, I've been watching Survivor. I finally started watching Survivor, y'all. So uh, like second chances when everything is, when some of the idols are like hidden during the um, challenge and you have to try to get them without other people noticing that you're getting them um, or you put a target on your back. So that kind of thing is always intriguing to me. Um, but I'm glad that Josh has one. I think it'll, he's already playing like balls to the wall. So balls to the wall and an LOS in his pocket. That's a and lot. If, and if he's that confident that he can beat anyone, then, you know, if I'm, Something that I think will be intriguing is once people find out about the selected role, are people now going to put themselves into a battle match just to get, like, if they feel confident that they can beat someone, you know, why not go there and get as many powers as you can? I mean, that's a lot of confidence. <laughs> I don't know if I would do that. I'd be too scared. Of I don't, the but... only person I can see who would do that right now is Josh. <laughs> yeah. But there is a part yeah. where it's like, just go in and just... You know, like Christmas Eve, you're coming in and you're stealing all the little powers in those little boxes. Yeah, but you could walk away with nothing and then you would have yeah. just showed that you're a physical threat and people would see you as a huge target and you walked away with nothing. Um, the other thing that's interesting is Josh has chosen not to tell people. 
uh, which I think is smart, but he knows that somebody else is going to get that power. Like somebody yeah. else, like, um, spoiler alert for those, why would you watch this recap if you haven't seen the show? Okay, so for example, <laughs> Natalie <laughs> is going to go and get a, go yeah. to the luxury row. And so he's got to count on Natalie not telling people now. Because the, the moment that Natalie's like, oh, I got a power, or there was an option for a power, and I got nothing, people are going to be like, oh, really, Josh? Tell me about it, bro. Yeah, he, so. and he either has to go, oh, I got nothing, too. Like, it's like, either way, you're going to look sus now. Um, I it's agree. Like, it's, it's the whole, like... Um, secret Hitler thing where you're like, oh, it just so happens that all of us three got reds in a row, you know, where you're like, okay, it could happen once, but twice. And then mm. like, he should have come out and said what it was in my opinion and said, I got nothing. And then when Natalie goes in, it's, she's going to be the one who has to now either look sus or like admit she has a power. Even if and if she doesn't get one, she's gonna end up looking sus anyway. Because you know. Yeah. Well, and do you think that Josh? I mean, I, like Josh had to have thought of this. You would think maybe his plan is the minute whoever wins comes out, he's he's pulling a Brent in this episode, running after them, <laughs> locking them in a room, and saying, hey, "Let's come that over door." And saying, "Hey, let's." let's but you have to. You have to hope that that person is going to be an ally of yours. Yeah. And I mean, Nat Natalie, like, um, oh, we'll talk about Natalie a little bit. It's really hard not to get ahead of ourselves. I know. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, if it had been Katie, I think he could have done it. If it had been somebody like, I think there are a couple of people who'd be like, "Nah, nah, I'm gonna blow you up, bro." Or like we're not going to be able. This isn't sustainable long term. This isn't tenable. The next person, the next person. We're supposed to like talk to every person. How long before everybody's just in the know and not telling each other? Like that's stupid. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So it's it's not tenable. It's not sustainable long term. So what's the end goal? Is going to be the question. So I mean, we'll see. Okay, <laughs> let's yes, let's I, get into the, that. That was yeah. a lot of time on like. <laughs> The stuff that was not actually in the episode is what's funny, but it's, I mean, well, they spent a big, it's 16 a big, hours thinking about it. And it's a big change. I mean, this is like, you don't go into the, you go into the game expecting LOSs, right? They didn't go in expecting this room where they could get a power. So it does completely change. I mean, this thing too is like, you're also looking like Boo Boo the Fool that you've been looking for an LOS all week. And and Josh had this information that there was there was uh, no LOS. So he's just almost like it could feel like he's laughing at you in a way. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it, he tells Shireen specifically that he wants to be transparent with her. Um, but he's also like, but we don't have to tell each other everything. So I'm not sure what he means by that. So I think he has deniability. But she in particular, you know, she hand sewed a special pocket for the LOS so no one would see it. And girl, you don't need all that. <laughs> like, no, this is just given to you, and then you take it up to your room, and nobody sees you. You don't gotta like be sneaking snaky about it. And so, yeah, um, it could be a snack. That pouch. would be a great way to build trust too. And he's somebody who needs to build trust right now. So if I were him, I would have told Shireen. Uh, cause he needs to build that, that trust. He keeps telling her he wants to work with her, but he needs to show her. Um, but mm, we'll see. I mean, maybe it works out. Maybe, maybe we're boo-boo the fool. But, I want to be boo-boo the fool. You know, I've always heard it as boo-boo the clown, but boo-boo the fool works. No, it's the Tommy version. Boo-boo the fool. Boo-boo the fool. The jester boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be next season's um, next season's sequester bot. Boo Boo the Fool comes out, gonna give a punishment. You watch, watch this back when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see it, and I hope it's Tommy underneath the Boo Boo the Fool mask. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so let's dig into the episode itself. Everybody wants Josh to come back. Interestingly, as aggressive as Josh has played, everyone still feels like they can play with him. Even though Jay West voted for Josh and Josh was coming for Katie, 
Katie wants to work with Josh. Brett wants to work with Josh. Shireen wants to work with Josh. For some reason, they all voted out Josh, but they want Josh back? Yeah, I I think what I would think is like, the first round, you're just throwing your name out to throw it. Like, it's like, there's no connections yet. And I could see how they're excited for Josh because now you know Josh's game. Like, Josh has shown, quote unquote, shown his game. And so now you at least know how to prepare for him. And for Katie, you could see it as, listen, you know, I've, I've done this with Katie where it's like, we're the two, we're going after each other. We're butting heads. What if instead <laughs> we we turn that around <laughs> And, and go after everyone else instead. You know, it's a, it's a smart strategy as two people butting heads to do. Yeah, and it was effective for you and Katie. I mean, y'all didn't win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you got, you got, certainly, you weren't first boot. We'll say that. Um, so that was, I mean, and that was really what it was about. So, oh my gosh. Uh, I think that, yeah, you know, it's interesting that everybody wants him back. Um, and we quickly move into the Keller and Detective twist. Whew. This twist is so hard. Um, as we mentioned, Billy is our killer. Rachel is our detective. Uh, they do not know that about one another, at least to begin with. As the killer, what was your main goal? When you were yeah, and mine was a little different, right? Like mine was, it was I didn't get to like put people up. It was like I just got to murder someone every single round. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, this was a little bit more, and I think I've seen her do this in a couple different minis. But I, uh, I think for me, when I was the murderer, my goal was to think of each round and how to look, how to push it off me as much as possible. And I think that's. Part of this, part of the thing, and like you can see it in Billy, what she did was she focused on not being caught. She didn't care who went home. It really felt that way. She was like, I don't like her three targets was essentially these people won't lead back to me. And I did stuff like that too, where it's like, well, this person has to go home because, especially if someone was just cleared, which we see with Billy, is like, if someone is cleared, you're going to you're gonna throw them off, like you're going to kill them now because they're no use to you. They're not a cover, they're not a shield to be seen as the killer. Does that make sense? So it's like when, and we'll get to it, but when Jacob gets cleared as, as from the detective as the killer, well, now Jacob is a, a, a clean and even Katie, they're, they're clean. There's no, we know they're not the killer. So if I'm Billy, I'm thinking, well, I get rid of them. They're not helping protect me and not, and not another person that could be seen as the killer anymore. I mean, okay. So this was the, the difference to me. You had to get through something like 20 people, right? Without getting caught. She had to go through two rounds, three rounds total, if you count the last yeah. round, um, which I guess I don't know why you wouldn't count the last round. <laughs> but um, yes, so she had to go through three rounds. So why not choose a target? Um, you have the opportunity to put three people up. Why not? go for somebody and i really like she was so focused on not getting caught um that she didn't to me choose a target she just like chose people she didn't care about going home and people that would throw things off for her yeah and that's and, the thing is like she didn't she didn't choose a target she wasn't and, and the, you could tell by that point no one was even really looking for the killer they were already focusing on who they were like read the room no one was even looking for you at that point now try to and, and people were just assuming her target was Jacob because, you know, they're all thinking you got to put a target up. Who's your target, Natalie or Spencer? Like, you know. Yeah. I also think it's interesting though, because when we watch her um, come up with her list, she says she purposely doesn't want to ruffle feathers. Uh, and that's, that's hard to hear um, in a game because you kind of want people to ruffle some feathers. Um, and, she is able to kind of keep the target off of her uh, effectively. And I don't think anybody knew. I think no one knew until last night who the, who the killer was. Um, I didn't watch with anybody, but I'm sure they were all like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, it was so weird to me that nobody would even say Billy's name. 
like they assumed it was going to be one of these big threats like Brent or or Katie or Marcelo or Jacob who are the killer I don't know it's even after Rachel's revealed to be the detective they're not like oh so it could be anybody it's not like about who's going to be most aggressive they it could be anybody um yeah. they still didn't think of Billy or Shireen um Muna's name was thrown out there a little bit but like how is she doing that like I I almost don't I mean I don't think if Billy had been put up there if she had been caught and put up there I don't think she was going home period no anyway so I to me it, it would have been more important to put a target next to me than to like there are very few people that she would have gone home next to like if it Jacob had been her first choice and it and been her Jacob she might she might have gone home I and she had the best situation. I mean, she learns that Rachel is the detective, hit her ally. You know, I think that's part of the reason she was so successful. Is like she had this strong alliance that was that was all, um, I think, protecting each other. And I think they were blind to the fact that Billy could be the killer because they were all they were focused, they were focusing their eyes elsewhere. But knowing that Rachel is a detective, you can do a lot of damage with that because you now know who. T- who you're trying to fool. Like, you know who you're trying to seem like you're not the killer. But again, like you said at that point, why do you mean you're, you're not going home? But I also know it's scary being up for elimination. You, you don't yeah, want to be up I for elimination. Yeah, I understand garden. trying to avoid being up for elimination. But it's hard when only one person can make, can take the shot, basically, and they don't. Like, you're like, no, take a shot. Um, and she makes it pretty clear that she doesn't want Jacob to go. She is like, I'm not voting for Rachel and I'm not voting for Jacob. And she kind of leads the chart. She's everybody's saying that, but she says it very distinctly, um, primarily as well, that she's not going to vote for them. And so her targets are Spencer and Natalie. And you're just kind of like, okay, I guess, you know, <laughs> like. And I think she did some, and we'll get into it, but I think she did some, I actually think she did more damage to her. I think she was in a really good spot. I still think she's in a really good spot, but I think I mean, we will see with Natalie. Like, I think that was someone who Natalie saw her as a really close ally. And even if Billy didn't, she's now exposed that to Natalie. And that, you know, makes a difference. Yeah, because of her votes. Yeah, because of her votes. Um, so, and that's also hard though, because Billy is in a good space with everybody yep. so her votes being exposed period is going to put her in a bad place because she is so good with everyone so more than being the killer she should be more worried about her votes being exposed yep. because being the killer you're like oh i gotta put up somebody i thought you know i just trying to keep the target off me i blah 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 like you can come up with reasons why you put people up but why you voted for somebody that's a lot harder you know um, so Billy <laughs> Billy switches originally was going to do Brent and then she switches to Jacob and she says that this will throw people off to thinking that Brent is the killer why would that make it, it seems to work I mean people do think it, like uh, Rachel doesn't guess Brent but the, the moment she guesses wrong she's like oh it could have been Brent why does she think it's why do they think that Brent would go after Jacob? Maybe they think, I don't know. Like, I can't remember in the episode if Brent was saying Jacob's name or not, but I I don't think he was. No one's saying Jacob's name, but it, um, maybe they're thinking that like Brent, Brent would have, you know, the, the, the confidence to, to go after it. Like who would, who would go after Jacob? Maybe like a Brett, someone who's more, you know, uh, uh, fiery with his gameplay, you know, or at least assumed to be more fiery with his gameplay. I think that's exactly, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, I think people expect Brent to play aggressive. I don't think Brett's playing aggressive. I think, but Ren is playing scared. Um, he's gonna come for me for that comment. No, I can already Mr. Twitter fingers after me right now. But <laughs> I mean, he said it in his interview with Darren. I'm not gonna play like I said that people should play, and I don't think he does. Um, you know, Josh even mentioned specifically that Brent caved to him. 
so I think that, you know, Josh is seeing that Brent is playing scared, but everybody else is expecting Brent to play aggressive. And putting jo putting Jacob up is an aggressive move. So you would think that would be how Brent plays, but uh, I don't think Brent would have done that. I think he would have put up Billy before he put up Jacob, to be honest. I think Brett has a lot of pressure either by him that was put on by himself or put on like he he's, I think he knows he, or at least in his mind, he needs to do well or wants to do. I mean, I think he, I think all of them do, but I do think he has put in this added pressure as he is the RGP correspondent. And I think like going out first would have been that like he would have been heartbroken as everyone would have, but I think he is taking that and playing with his back against the wall, especially he's a player where the minute his back does get against the wall, he lashes. Like you can see it with this episode and we'll talk about like the KD thing. Like, like he, you could see it. He was panicked. He spent, I mean, think about it. Like he's just sitting there like thinking about the fact that he betrayed KD. KD now knows that he betrayed him. And now that's all he's thinking about while they're in lockdown. And then he goes into the game and you're just released and he's just ready. That's the only thing he can focus on. Yeah. And he's not thinking he about everyone else. We see Brent explode a couple of times. We see him explode there. We can go ahead and talk about the KD thing because we're technically past that chronologically. Um. <laughs> we're all over the place. When you get when you get Susie and Tommy, you're on a, a wavy boat. <laughs> we're gonna go forward then backwards too. I mean, we're retro watching, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But um, we see him explode a couple of times. We'll talk about the KD thing in just a second. But he also explodes about the detective situation. He is adamant, detective, reveal yourself. He is like creaking on my, like his voice gets so loud. And Brent is a loud person anyway. So the loud, I, like I imagine it like reverberates in the room. He is like, detective, um, if you do not reveal yourself, I am voting you out. We should all vote the detective out. We could all be killed. Um, he was, I, I mean, I wanted Jalen to pop in and be like, this baby could die because that was the intensity of his screaming. He was like, we could all die. Um, even though at yeah. that moment he, he was, you know, half of the people had been chosen. He was kind of okay, but he was not going to hear about it. He wanted to know who that detective was. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I like, I like that we got to see both perspectives. We got to see, and I, cause I got where Brent was coming from. I'm like, if we know, we can then like work as a team to figure out who the killer is. But from from Rachel, and I'm really glad we got Rachel's confessionals, um, and, and specifically with this of like, Rachel was like, it doesn't make sense for me because I'm not going to get the right information. Yes, maybe we can all get together and get information, but people aren't going to be genuine to me and they're going to feed me the information which is, I think, what Billy, I think what she did was she told the, she already told the killer who the detective is. And now the killer is giving her the information that is going to skew her judgment. Well, she didn't tell Billy at first, right? Billy was not one of the, at first only Shireen and, oh, okay. only Shireen and Muna know at first. But once, it's because we have the scene where, uh, Shireen's explaining to Billy, oh, I ran away from you because I knew Rachel was the detective and I didn't want to share that information with other people. Gotcha. And Billy was like, yo, but he tells me anything. And it was a beautiful moment of Billy pretending to be hurt. It was great acting. Um, but yeah, so Billy doesn't know that Rachel's the detective. Okay. Uh, I think that to me, there's only one killer. So that one killer is going to feed you misinformation but everybody else is going to feed you the right information. So you still, and that's the way it would go anyway, except for you're not having conversations with everybody. So to me, you get more information if you tell them the killer. I also feel like Rachel's consistent. No, I'm totally going to get it. Mathematically, as Muna pointed out, that doesn't work. <laughs> like to me, you know, I almost felt, uh, and I hate to say this about my girl, Rachel, but hubris to be like, no, no, I'm totes gonna get it. I'm totes. I'm like, girl, you don't have great chances. The chances are not in your favor. This is the like Hunger Games situation where your name is in a million times. Like, you are. It's it's a lot harder to me to be the detective than the killer. A lot. I loved harder. it though. It was like she's like the local detective, and all the townspeople are like, yeah, you you're gonna get it. And in mind, they're like, 
yeah, we need to find, we need to just, we need to prepare, we need to battle down our hatches, like, get ready for this killer to come, because it's going to happen, but this detective's going to try their best, and I was like, but I'm glad we saw so much Rachel, like, that's the thing about this episode, we saw a lot from the people that we didn't see a lot of in the first episode, which is really nice, that I feel like we've seen everyone now, like, we've seen... We got. I still could use a little more Natalie. I could still yeah. use a little more Natalie, but I think she. I mean, she's still here, so who knows? We might get more. Um. So I think yeah. So Brent freaks out about that. He freaks out about Katie. There's one more incident where he freaks. Oh, the Josh Brent thing when they're like yeah. when Rachel's like Josh and Brent, y'all are a thing. He's like, why would you say that? like it's like calm down, bro. Like, Something about hot potatoes. <laughs> he throw me yeah, like, he's hot like potatoes. He would drop me and I him. And I I'm like, Brent, you don't need to share all that. You could be like, there are tons of duos here. There are duos I mean like me and Josh just met, but like what he says in the confessional to me is what I would say. There, I'd be like, I just met this dude. Mona and Jacob have known each other forever. I'm pretty sure Spencer and Katie have been like donors. They look like brother and sister. You know, who knows what's up with them? <laughs> like, I would, I mean, Billy's played with in a game with like 90% of yeah. these people. Um, so why are you looking at me and Josh? That's weird. Like, I yeah. think that. Um, he could have misdirected instead of freaking instead of freaking out as much. He he needed to do, but he and Katie. Should we talk about it? It yeah. was a lot. <laughs> that was the number one Brent, Brent freak out. If we were going to do a list of Brent freak out every, and that would be a good drinking game. Drink every time Brent yeah. freaks out. Um, finish finish your drink if he slams the door in somebody's face. <laughs> For every slit, for every door closed, <laughs> you take a shot. <laughs> every time he alienates somebody, take a shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Brett. And he, you know, it's like I again, it's hard because I get where he's coming from. I just think he he had tunnel vision at that time. His focus was Katie. He wasn't focusing on how that was affecting everyone else around him. And I think that's fair. Like that's like. Brent's feelings are valid. He was scared. He didn't know, and he knew he needed to talk to Katie. And he knew he needed to. I'm scared to... of Katie Hopkins. If you're not scared of Katie Hopkins, you, you send me a letter. If you're not scared of Katie Hopkins, explaining why you're not scared of her, because I'm scared of Katie Hopkins. I mean, like the number one gift of Katie Hopkins on online is her with that knife, like. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yep. um, yeah. So, I mean, I totally get it. I think that he was super tunnel visioned on both having the conversation with Katie, but also on this plan of a marriage of necessity, something that from what I understand from his Twitter, he had planned before he even went in there. He was like, oh, I'm going to get into a marriage of necessity with somebody. Um, but it wasn't a marriage of necessity as much as it was, mutually insured destruction, right? Yeah. And I think that that is something that um, is very different. And he didn't need to pull out with Katie. Uh, he's just I'm not being as flexible as I, th as I think he should be. Yeah. And um, it didn't really make sense in the sense that it would have made sense to do from the beginning. But I, what Katie took it as is like, Wait, you you owe me a favor. Like you you betrayed me. Why are we now both like losing out of this situation? She's like it should be, and so that's how she interpreted it as is like this doesn't make sense. Is it just you threatening me? This isn't this isn't beneficial to me. To me, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that absolutely, and I think that another thing that he did not take into consideration is will a threat work with this person? Um, because obviously there are some people that it would work with, including himself, right? Um, but it did not work with Katie. Um, it did not put Katie in a good mood. Katie, I think, would almost rather battle back him than worry about saving him, battle match him. And so I think he is not being flexible. He's like, oh, I've got all these strategies in, plan, in place when I go into this game, but he's not thinking... Oh, you know what? The strategy won't work with this person. I'm going to have to tweak it or change it or move. Like, you gotta, and 
I, I don't love how Katie reacts in this situation either. Um, I like that she does it in confessionals. Yeah, like she did. I, you're right. Like she did. Like she did stay on it a little too long. Of like, wait, but why did you vote for Natalie? But I do like that she like agreed to it to his face, and then in confessionals are like, yeah, I am my like I know what I need to do here. Like Katie is really good at hiding how like not hiding how she's doing, but she's good at being like we can still work together. But in my head, I know we can't. Like she's good at that kind of thing. I just, I don't know, you know, we don't get Brent's perspective. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that he believes her. Katie, like they met, they talked about it in the last episode. Um, and, you know, we've seen them talk about it online. When Katie's angry, she radiates yeah. anger. She radiates it. Like she, like she's sitting there smiling, but she's going to kill you. <laughs> like, and I don't know if Brent believes that he, one over Katie. Um, and she needs to make it believable. She, like, to me, I would have been like, oh my God, we don't even need to talk about this. I totally get you through your vote. I didn't go home. The six are still strong. I think you did a great thing because now nobody thinks we're out. Like, yeah, you need to come in and fake that shit. Um, but Katie, Katie, Katie's straightforward as hell. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, she might be like, oh, okay. But like, she says it in a way where you're like, Okay, and she's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's and you're like, like, like you writing down my name. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, we don't know Brent's point of view. I don't know. Again, I think he had tunnel vision at that time, so it's like it's it will be interesting to know like what he picked up on, what he didn't. But you're right, like Katie, like when she fumes, she fumes, and I think like I well, I think he, he did say it during the He's like, I know that she knows that I know that he's he, that. She's upset at me. Like I, like it was transparent that she was upset. We at have me. an issue. Sorry. Are you? There we go. Okay, I think I can hear you again. Oh, good. We, okay, good. All right. So I have no clue what you just said. <laughs> I was saying that. Um, so th- we did hear Brent's confessional with he. He knows that she knows that she's upset with it. Like it's like it's transparent. Yeah. There is like she's that part. I think he's aware of like she he knows that he still has work to do and i think she wanted to put his feet to the fire a little bit i think she wants him to like i know what you're saying and i do agree with that i think her like what i think she went with was more the strategy of no you have to earn back my trust like you i think yeah up. katie and i do do not play a similar game so um i will say like katie plays an intimidation game and she generally can back it up you know what i mean but it is part of what makes her a huge threat uh yeah is that she she's not like one to forgive you know what i mean you burn katie she's gonna burn you back or you're gonna have to or you're gonna owe her big time she doesn't have enough band-aids for everybody no she doesn't (laughs) and it is funny that she works with kids because she's like i work with kids and i'm gonna murder you (laughs) and you're like like all of these people are (laughs) such sweet kind people like i mean like billy being the murderer she's like hilarious and amazing and really cool and then she's like who am i gonna kill today (laughs) um Uh, yeah we love it um it's so fun to see all these people outside of the normal element so but while Brian is doing this he is alienating the crap out of people he alienates muna he alienates brendan he alienates rachel um he is so focused on katie that every single person he taught he shuts out the room like "Mm, don't like this um he does it in a way that makes them feel almost humiliated right like it's an it's like the way he i like I, I would not let somebody treat me that way. And you have to because it's a game, but it's a, it's something that like in an everyday situation, Brent and I would have like gotten into it. Like if you try to, and same thing with like Muna or Rachel or Brent. Like I think like generally, if you did that to somebody outside a game, they would be like, ah, did you just try to shut the door on me? You could ask me politely to leave and I'll leave. But what you're not going to do is be rude to me. Like that would have led to like an actual situation in real life with a lot of these people. Um, because yeah, you're it, the- it is that blatantly rude. Yeah. But they had, they like, it's a game. So they have to just like kind of grumble about it, but they take it to heart. Each one of them took that to heart. Rachel said, you're dead to me. Muna was like, 
not today. And Brendan was like, that was really fucking rude. Um, something that I have said to you <laughs> in a game. <laughs> I felt so bad. But you're, what you're doing is you're taking, you're taking the control away from them. You're not giving them the option to leave. You're saying, no, 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 you don't even, th this room is off limits to you. You don't even get a chance to even enter. This is not, no, no, not today. Like no soup for you kind of attitude. It's just like, it's very, it's a, it's a wall. What it is, it's just a wall. It's not, there's no wiggle room. There's nothing there. And there's also and it, like a physicality to it, right? Yeah. Where he literally shuts the door. Um, and, um, and like that kind of comes off aggressive. And Brent's not being aggressive. He's Well, no. I mean, he literally is. But he's being like more frantic and more panicky. And I think that like, in a, again, like in an everyday situation, I'd be like, don't shut the door on me. And he'd be like, I'm not trying to. Um, I'm just trying. Like, I think we all understand where he's going to. From, but on the receiving end of that, especially when you can't communicate back, you're going to take that to heart. And yeah. uh, it really hurts him socially, I think. Um, and originally, Billy was going to put him up to make it seem like it was Katie. She switches to Jacob to throw the the link off because, like, who would put Brent up if not Katie? I still think that <laughs> any of the people I just named would have, for example, Brent, Brenda, Muna, or Rachel would have yeah. definitely put him up. Um, so I, I think that Billy wasn't maybe um privy to those understandings of how he was affecting people in the house because if she had put him up he would have i think 99 percent sure he would have gone yeah because it'd be it'd be a, a big name and it, it'd be someone that you, like i feel like you could still you could get the votes around him yeah he has a polarizing personality um he like people think he's getting close with josh Marcelo saying he doesn't trust him. Katie doesn't trust him. She owes him a vote, to be frank. <laughs> right? She's like, oh, no, no. I got you, boy. She would love to throw a vote on Brent. Uh, you know, I think that he so quickly aligned himself with Josh that, and so publicly aligned himself with Josh that even, I think, Shireen would vote for him. Uh, she would yeah. still vote for Spencer, let's be honest. <laughs> what I do think she did, and I, I think it was unintentionally, but it did put light on Jacob Jones and his relationships. And if I'm in that game, man, Jacob Jones is real safe real quickly. You know, like I'm thinking about that. Like, like Jacob Jones has you a big wall. You would think you would be him. thinking about that. But why is nobody thinking about that? Like the most hair pulling moment is when every single person is like, we're not doing Jacob. No, no, no. You're good with Jacob. We're all aligned with Jacob, right? And nobody goes, wait, we're all aligned? That's well, that's what I'm like, saying. Like Luna literally says something to Rachel and is like, you know, she he's super close with Marcella. And Rachel's like, that's not what he told me. And neither one of them goes, wait, is he lying to us? Both of them are like, oh, well, that makes Marcello shady, not Jacob. And I'm like, Jacob is also shady. Um, but it might plant the seeds. Who knows? I mean, like, but it might plant the seeds of like in these later, in these early rounds, I feel like this is where. That's like those protections work, but if if those protections are being seen now in the later episodes where you you have to cut a Jacob because you know how connected he is now, I think that's where it's like putting the light on him now plants the seeds for later. Or, you or they are keep a lot, you're a lot more optimistic than I am. <laughs> I am irritated that Brendan's like, I need a shield, I need a shield, so I'm gonna keep Jacob Jones. I'm like, you could Brendan, you've got like five shields in front of you. Nobody can keep Katie's name out of their mouth, for example. If everybody's trying to protect your shield, he's not being a shield. He's yeah. actually because then they're gonna send you home instead of your shield. Um, just like Spencer, like Spencer wanted Jacob to be his shield. And guess what? They all want to send Spencer home instead of Jacob. So a shield is not effective if people aren't actually shooting at it. Like <laughs> there's not like you are more his shield than he is yours. Um, I was gonna say so it's like it's like he's the main shield, but everyone else is using that same shield. So in a sense, they're his outer shield. <laughs> it's yeah, like a everybody's like protect our shield. <laughs> I'm like. What are you doing? They're throwing their bodies in front of their shield. And you're just like, you're like, okay, so what are, what are we protecting here? Um, so that was very frustrating to watch. I, you know, Marcelo 
says that people are going after the easy targets with Natalie and Spencer. Um, and he said that last episode too. No, he didn't. Sorry, Josh said that about Marcelo. <laughs> I was confusing that. And I have to be honest, I think it's kind of frustrating to see, right? But what I love is these easy targets aren't easy. Josh came back, Natalie came back. So keep picking the easy targets and they're going to take you out. Um, yeah. and, and they're noticing. It, it, I I okay. think the easy the easy targets are noticing. Like I think Josh, he said in the first episode, like he the only thing he knew he was probably going to go up. The only thing he could do is build relationships. And I think some of the 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 bigger personalities that that from the minis, I think they're almost they're not. And I don't know, right? Like we're only seeing so much, but it feels like they're not doing that extra work now because they're almost like safe on uh, safe. And they're comfortable there, while while the Joshes, the Natalie, the the Rachels are building bonds with each other. They're almost going deeper than some of the other the, the bonds that were created uh, before the game. I agree and disagree with you. I think yeah. we can see some people who are integrating themselves well. Billy is doing a great job of integrating herself. Um, so is Rachel. Uh, I think Katie's doing a terrible job of making those connections beyond the threat players and. Part of that is hard because she's on defense, right? This yeah. whole game, she's been on defense. So it's hard to move past defense and start working offensively. But she has to. And, I mean, it's hard because she's not there. But, I'm you know, so she knows. <laughs> you know, um, she knows Shireen doesn't like her. She should be more proactive like we saw jacob go up to spencer and be like bro i know you're coming for me let's squash it marcelo did this with josh let's squash it she needs to go to shireen and be like let's squash it she needs to ingratiate herself with people that are not these big like they keep trying to create sixes let the six go the sex is that six is not working it's not helping <laughs> anybody like there was a new six created with marcelo and katie earlier just create bonds with people. And it's very difficult when you're on the defense like Katie is. But I think that that really hurt her is that she's not creating the relationships where people are willing to take bullets for her. You know? And I think her game plan going in, because she knew she was going to be a big, a big threat. I think she went in feeling like I need a close group of people. Like that's, it's worked for her before in the sense, like it got, you know, I think she was like, I need my, my alliance. And so I think the last two episodes we've seen are just trying to form that alliance. And while other people were forming, and I, and I think she had individual bonds that she was using, but she wasn't creating new bonds. Like she has the Spencer bond. She had the Brandon bond. And, but there was people that she, we didn't see a lot of those bonds being formed. Um, I liked the bond with Marcelo. I thought that was smart to go, you know, someone that she's probably out of the, the original six, someone she probably was the least close to. She seemed to have a really good conversation with. I think their time management wasn't great because it did put a target on Marcelo's back. I think you got to watch the time you spend on those conversations. But I did like that she was like reaching out in that way too. Yeah, I think that she's doing a good job strengthening her bonds. And the Marcelo bond was especially smart because Marcelo is actually somebody who's interested in keeping Katie. Spencer was fine putting Katie's name up last episode when he was told that if he got safety, he needed to put Katie up. He was like, that's cool. Uh, Jacob's like, Katie can go. And like, Brend and Brendan doesn't see her as the shield. And I don't get that. People are taking shots at Katie. She is the literal shield here. Try to keep Katie. Get rid of Jacob Jones and keep Katie if you are trying to find a shield. Um, but Jacob Jones smiles and smiles and looks good in his outfits, and nobody is even seeing him as a threat yet. And it's so frustrating. Oh, but now um, it's now good Katie. for us, Jacob Jones stands. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, but if I'm like Jacob we get Jones, more of our boy, but but if I'm Jacob Jones. Why are you not protecting Katie? Like he said in the first episode, he's like, I don't really, if Katie goes, it's fine. But he's not realizing that Katie's the shield in front of him. <laughs> once, you know, once Katie goes, now now it's wide open. Now we don't know. Yeah, who the, exactly. Who the, like he, she said, she said, now you're going to have to pick somebody else. So who yeah. are you going to pick? 
Um, but I don't think it's going to be Jacob Jones. I think they're going to go after somebody like Natalie, um, who again has the some of the fewer connections. Um, so we kind of are not going chronologically. That's fine. Uh, it's hard to go chronologically, lot y'all. But it's everything like we're gets, getting we're getting we're hitting the point. So, so everybody, you know, is going around trying to decide. Rachel makes her last choice. It she says Marcelo. It's not Marcelo. She says, "Oh well, BTW, Josh and Brent are a couple or a duo, <laughs> couple duo, whatever." <laughs> and and Brent is like, "Nah, the I, I'll kill him now if you want." <laughs> <laughs> like don't put me like I, I don't want to be on a spaceship with Brent if if we all have to go colonize the moon or something he the, he'll throw you in front of the aliens and be like kill her now I promise I'll be an alien um, yeah. <laughs> um, so he is he's willing to shed some Josh blood uh, <laughs> to prove that he's not with him um, did you like this move from Rachel though because I felt like Rachel, you just got put up on elimination, right? Like she was revealed; it was the last one. She was going up, so now you're up to be voted for, and you're tar like you're you're the one that can be voted for, not Brent. And yet you're you're pointing out Brent and Josh. Yeah, it's like you're you're putting the target on them for the next couple rounds. But I'm worried. Like, I, now I am. I know what happens, but in, in this episode, but I was worried in the moment. I'm like, Rachel, you're just you're you're making Brent your enemy here. When, when you may need his vote. So I feel like there's something that we must have missed. I feel like somebody had to be like, well, Rachel, who did you think it was next? Or who was going to be your next guest? But I still don't know. She was like, you could still say, I thought it was Brent without being like, because Brent and Josh are a duo. I'm like, how does that make one of them a killer? Um, like, I didn't see the connection there to the idea that one of them is a connection. Like, Muna and Jacob being a duo wouldn't, mean that one of them would like that would make more sense um and that's where katie mind goes she's like i think it's moon um so it's it just confused me and i agree it puts like it just she's very open about showing her cards rachel is and uh so far it hasn't been a problem if spencer had gone it would have been a problem and it may be a problem in the future because she is very clear about who she doesn't trust um and it's, I don't know if she has enough people on her side to protect her in that situation. Because uh, a lot the, of the her audience, allies are allies with some of those people too. Yeah. And the audience, when we loved, like, I liked that she's like, who was it? It was someone in her, or Spencer was like, talking about who to vote for. And she's like, yeah, I'm voting for you. Like, she just, she does just give, give it. And I'm glad she's not being like, oh, shucks. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is hard. She's instead being like, no, like I have my people, I I'm good. You 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 mosey on, go talk to other people, <laughs> like get their votes because I'm good. And I I, I do like as in an entertainment factor, I do like that she's you know doing that. Uh, so that's what brings us to a good point, which is we have Natalie and Spencer come back in, and they have to choose. They uh, and, and so does Jacob. BTW, yes, Jacob. We saw that you clearly tailored your little flop outfit. You were like, let me roll up these things and make sure it's tight so everyone can. And he's like, I wore a tank top for a reason, so I guess now I'm wearing a red tank top instead. Um, and he looked salty, he was a pout. He, he was like, uh, what do you think he was more pouty about being a flop or the fact that it like ruined his aesthetic of the tank top? The look, the look. Yeah, <laughs> um, but he, so they all come back in and it felt clear to me that while Natalie and Spencer were alone, they had decided whoever the third person was, was who they were going to go after, no matter who it was. Um, is that how it felt to you? Or do you think they were both like, oh yeah, we need to get Jacob out. I felt like in, when they first come in, they were like, Jacob, but that didn't, to me, they were getting information. Like right away, maybe try to get Jacob, but the minute people gave back, uh, gave uh, uh, feelings like they weren't okay with going after Jacob. Like someone said, like why are you saying that in front of Muna? Like you, Muna, you need yeah. to, yeah. So for me, it's like they should have 
put it on someone else or put it on Rachel and, you know, team up together. To me, Jacob wasn't the option once you realize that. And I think they should have realized it sooner than they were. It seemed like Spencer was still pushing it longer than I would have liked him to be. There was a couple people that I, I was like, okay, you need to move on from this. What do you, why do you think they went for Jacob originally though? I think because I think as Spencer, a Natalie, a Rachel know that at a certain point, if they keep taking out each other, it's just going to be the this alliance, these big threats around. I think if you have three of the players that came in here who didn't have the relationships, and then you have Jacob who does, at least try. What what's what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to come after you anyways, right? Like like you say Jacob's name. You're, he's already coming. Like you're already one of the two, so why not try? But I do think then you have to be willing to. You have to be flexible at a certain point, and you can't just keep pushing a name that no one's going to take. I just completely disagree with you. I think okay. that they had a plan. I think Natalie and Spencer, they were sitting in the back waiting for whoever was next, and they were like, "Whoever is the third person, that's who we have to go after. That's who we have to say it is." It was Jacob Jones. They were like, "Perfect. He's a huge threat." Um, we'll get him out. I don't think that Spencer thinks he's one of the lower threat people. Yeah, Everybody else seems to. Everyone else seems to. Brendan's like floater. Marcelo's like floater. Um, but I don't think Spencer, I think Spencer thinks he's a big threat. Uh, so I don't see Spencer's goal as aligning with the smaller threats. Um, and certainly Rachel wanted him out. Rachel and he were not going to be aligned. I don't think Rachel said Jacob Jones once. I don't think she was on that train. No. She was and, and that's, I guess my thing, if that's the case, then I, like, I guess I'm trying to give him more credit because in my mind, if I'm Spencer, it does not, if, if your thing is whoever the third person is, when it's Jacob Jones, you have to change your mind. He's part of your, your group in a sense. Like he is protecting you in, in some ways. So, if that's if what you're saying of like it's whoever the third person is, I almost would rather him be like he was trying to do a coup or something. Like I'd rather I'd rather him him do that because he pushed it for longer than I wanted him to. If the case was just whoever the third person is is who we're going for. I, it just doesn't make sense to me that you would go. It's episode two. Like yeah. I want him, I want him to go for Jacob. I want him and Natalie to go for Jacob. I want Rachel to go for Jacob. I want Brendan to go for Jacob. I want people to go for Jacob, but they're not going to while Spencer's there. <laughs> um, so his best option was Natalie, and um, I think that you know he just did not re recognize that he does not have the social capital that Jacob Jones has. Uh, he does not have that charm, that wit, and he does not have the long built-in relationships. Like, I mean, I'm sure Spencer's, we haven't seen enough Spencer to, but I mean, we know Jacob Jones. And I know that if you talk to Jacob Jones and we see him doing the seance thing, building his circle of trust, he makes people feel good yep. um, about themselves. And they, he makes people feel good about their relationship. Uh, and like we said, he, people are throwing themselves in front of him. So Spencer just needs to, that needs to click for him. Like, I can't be Jacob Jones. I can't do it. Like, that's fine. I have to go into a game knowing that there are going to be people more charismatic than me who might have more social capital. And I'm going to have to play around them. But going in and being like, go, 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 Jacob Jones, it's just People aren't going to throw Jacob out for you. You have to be more convincing why Jacob needs to go. Not to save your neck, but because he needs to go. And it was too, I guess it was too early is what people are saying. I don't know. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the thing about Jacob and like to give him his credit, he like his reputation isn't all he has is, you know, he is so okay. When you talk to him, it is like, you've known him for years. And I, I think he does like, he, the way he talked about it in the first episode where he's like, I just, he's like almost like he molds into the, when he meets someone, it's like he molds into exactly what they need. And it's so, I don't even know if he knows he's doing it all the time. I think it's just, that's Jacob Jones. I, I worry in this game that it gets him in trouble that he had, like, again, like it's like at a certain point, they have to look eyes at the middle, but man, it's impressive well, to watch. I think he's going to have the same issue Billy has where like when his votes are exposed. That's when he's going to start having situations because 
he creates like an intimacy with him where you feel like it's just the two of y'all, just the two of you. Like even Rachel's like, he said he was aligning with me and we were just going to use Marcel. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> like, why would you believe that? Like, I mean, even knowing, not knowing Marcel's relationship with Jacob, like you don't know Jacob that well. Why would he, you know what I mean? Because he, he convinces you. He is one of the most convincing people in the world. Um, and to fight that takes a lot, a lot of strength. So I admire that they took the shot. They spent too long on it. They should have flipped a lot faster, a lot faster. Um, and Jacob does a great job. He squashes it with Spencer, still wants to go after Spencer, but he squashes it with Spencer so that they won't do the battle match. Uh, Spencer is very adamant that he's taking the least physical person into the battle match. Um, and he implies very heavily that that's going to be Rachel. And Shireen also feels like it might be her as well. Um, how do you, what do you think of that threat? I think, you know, I get his logic because like one of the, his strengths is, is physical challenges, right? But you don't know that it's going to be a physical challenge. And even the one we get, it's like, yeah, it's physical, but it's like, it, 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 I feel like anyone, the thing that they do well in Sequester is making it so that everyone has a chance in these battle matches, you know? And and the last one was a puzzle. So, so to me, I would... Focus, I guess you're focusing on who you want to beat, and I'm fine with that. But to say, like, oh, the physical one, like, I'm like, I guess if that's your strength, you know, gamble and, and make sure that's your strength. But um, I would be using – I would be focusing on other things, I guess. Like, like to, to me, me you know. I – I did. I was not a fan of this. Um, no. I will say that with the puzzle and with this, like I even texted Audrey last night. I was like, "Shit, I can do these challenges." I'm probably around the same like stature and size as Rachel. I'm probably heavier, and I could have done these challenges, and I could have done them well because you know what? I'm fucking queer as hell. I played fast pitch softball through high school. I can fucking throw a ball, okay, Spencer. So I may not look the most physical, and yeah, you can run as hell farther than me. You can jump over something farther faster than me. You can climb. Congrats, but can you throw a ball faster than me? You have great hand-eye coordination. I have no doubt because you are a soccer player, as we've heard. Like, we get it. You are well-coordinated. But don't think you're going to run all over me in a physical match that's something like throwing balls because, boy, I can throw some balls. And, like, like Shireen, that would have fired me up. I'd be like, yeah. let's go, bro. You think you're going to look badass beating a girl who's, like, five inches shorter than you and, like, a hundred and some odd pounds heavier at a physical match? Or you're going to lose and look like a schmuck, too. So, I mean... Like, I don't want to go into a battle match, but threatening the people that yeah. he threatened and the way he threatened them, insulted them. He insulted them, like she said. And he made himself look, if we're talking about Boo Boo the Fool. <laughs> we got another Boo Boo the Fool. He made himself kind of look like a dick. You know what I mean? He yeah. told he, he he basically said to Jacob, "I'm not picking you for a battle match." He basically said to Marcelo, "I'm not picking you for a battle match." He basically said, "Shireen and Rachel, one of y'all ends up." He should have. I mean, Josh's threat was effective. Yeah, Josh's threat was effective because he said, "Vote my way, or I will battle match you." Um, Spencer's was like, "No matter what, I'm taking you in if you don't." When because I think I can beat you, yeah. and, and it's based on the on something that I'm choosing, who is the least threatening? Out and like just insult after insult in, implied in that threat, and I would be, yeah. I like I, I every time I watch, I'm like, yeah, I would play like Shireen. That when she was like, you insulted my girl too. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah. yes, Shireen. I'm heated too. I am heated too. I've never even had a conversation with Rachel. I'm about to fight. I'm about to battle match the sky for her. Like, and, and I mean, the these are amazing it. challenges. Yeah. Yeah. They are like, I could do a puzzle too. Like I always talk about how I can't, I, I'm one of the few people in this community that doesn't apply for like Survivor or Big Brother or something because I know there's no way I would be half or I would win because all the challenges are so physical. Um, this is a show I can apply for and I think people should apply for because it has challenges that aren't just based on 
you know, who can run the farthest, who can jump the highest, who can swim the best. It's a lot more of a game that has things like hand-eye coordination or figuring out puzzles. These are things that um, test you on different strengths. And, you know, Katie's a beast, but she said it. She can't do hand-eye. She can't throw a ball to save her life. Um, so the fact that I could possibly be somebody like Katie is very cool to me. You know what I mean? Like, and there are very few games out there where somebody like me could have a chance at winning. So I love this challenge. <laughs> yeah. I really like the challenge. Um, I was going to say with the strategy of like that, like I, I don't like any of it. Cause even on a strategy side, you're now giving jo like Jacob permission to vote you out because you know, you know, he's not going to put you in a bad match. You're, you're giving all these people permission not to vote you out. And then you're leaving two people there. You're like, but one of you might like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But, um, and also I feel like they're not allied enough with Rachel, who is the implied person, um, that, or, or Shireen, or even, I guess the other person might be Brent. Again, if people are discounting Brent's military training in favor of his age, he's the oldest player. Like, nobody is allied enough with them that they're going to be like, no, don't take them in. I've got to save you, Spencer. Um, he's not inspiring people not to vote for him. Yeah, I was surprised he wasn't the person that went out this this round. I, the way that it all made it feel, I thought the votes would be on him. Um, we can talk about that a little bit. Now, Brendan, now when everybody, when the people went up, Everybody was like, oh, yeah, Spencer, Spencer, Spencer. We don't care. We don't care who goes third or fourth. We're, we're going to take out Natalie or Spencer, probably Spencer. I like Natalie better. Um, and then when it came time to actually vote, the battle match came up. And even though he said he was going to take the least physical, people were still throwing votes. What do you think about that? I think I think people are intimidated by his size. I think people are. I think even though he's saying one thing, do you still want? Do you still want to take the chance of, of battling Spencer? I think a lot of people. Like I think, like we just said, I think the challenges are are well enough that I think anyone would have a chance. But it's still hard to get out of that mindset of um, Spencer is what six four. <laughs> they said like he is. He's a tall person. He is athletic. If you can throw your vote and avoid the whole thing, and maybe he still goes home. I get. I can see why a lot of people did that. I can see that. Um, I was surprised it was as split. It was what, like five four. It was like um, five four. There was a, yeah. It was very close. That Rachel could have been voted out because everyone kept throwing their votes on. And weirdly enough, people were throwing their votes. And you know who didn't get a single vote? Mister Jacob Jones. <laughs> Even when Mr. they're throwing Jacob their Jones. <laughs> it was also very interesting. Yeah, not a single vote on Jacob Jones. I need people to notice it. I need them. <laughs> I it's love so Jacob hard because <laughs> I am a Jacob Jones. I mean, like I, I voted for Jacob Jones to win winners at War One. Jacob and I played our first game together. Um, you know, I I'm high. We were in our first alliance, our very first alliance. We were in a room together with Louie. Jacob Jones is a part of my sequester story. Vote Jacob Jones out, you guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's hard. If Jacob wins, I will be super happy for my bro. And I will be like, he deserves it. But as a viewer, I'm like, yeah. You know? I have like two sides. There's like the person that's like, I'm rooting. I'm like, uh, I'm rooting for Katie. I'm rooting for Muna. I'm rooting for Jacob Jones. I'm rooting for all these people. And then there's the side of me that's like watching and being like, well, but they should be doing this at this point. Like, this is what, like, taking notes on my big quill and, and uh, scroll and, like, sincerely. It's very uh, difficult to love these people and watch the show. Um, if I told you that I stayed up late trying to figure out how to create a Shireen and Katie, like, sit down conversation so we can all be friends, would you be surprised? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I literally drafted the two of them and they're going against each other. And I'm like, I'm like, you are two sides of my heart. And <laughs> you know what you're, I mean? You're the girl from Mean like, Girls who's like, I just wish we could all just have rainbows and puppies and yeah. we just all here happily. That was my Winners at War 2 speech, remember? <laughs> for <Yeah>. my intro. <laughs> uh, um, but yes, I mean, like, it's hard to love these. But yeah, so nobody, so it goes five, four, three, five on Natalie, four on um, 
Spencer and three on Rachel. I think, and she chooses to expose Billy, uh, Katie, and Marcelo. To me, an interesting moment is when she's like, oh God, not Marcelo. Marcelo is doing a great job and we're not seeing it all on screen, but he's doing a great job of creating these emotional connections. He is bonding with people. Uh, Katie it feels really strongly about him. And apparently so does Natalie. Because Natalie is like, if he voted against me, I don't know how I'll feel. And I was just like, think, Marcella? Okay. I think she picked three people. And this is like, I'm interested in the, her and Katie relationship. Because I really think she picked three people that wasn't, that she probably felt the closest to. Because other, other, maybe not Katie, but it's weird that Katie is the one outlier. You have... Because it seems like she took Billy personally, and she took Marcelo's vote. Per uh, would have taken Marcelo's vote personally, but Marcelo didn't vote for her. Um, and so, it's interesting that she didn't pick Billy here because she did seem super upset at Billy. But Katie was more like, "Well, Katie, you just gotta go. Like, like I gotta put you up." I, I wonder. I, I want to know more of her thought process there. I really, I really hope we get more confessional from her next episode, especially explaining that because she's like, Billy, I'm coming back for you. And I'm like, you don't have to come back for her. You can get her right now. Uh, I don't know Billy's like hand-eye coordination. I don't know if Billy would have beat her or not. Um, but I'm not sure why she didn't. Like Katie is a beast. Um, I would be afraid to go against Katie in a lot of things, including a jigsaw puzzle. Um, Katie is like a triple threat. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just physical with her. If I were playing scared, I would, I would, I would stay away from Katie. And I'm not saying Natalie is playing scared. Clearly, Natalie is not playing scared. But um, I'm just saying, like, that's somebody. I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. She said she was going to throw her vote. I don't know why she threw it on Natalie. She should have thrown it on Rachel. Um, or Jacob Jones. <laughs> for God's sake, somebody vote for Jacob. If she, if um, she threw it on Natalie, if she or she threw it on Rachel, it would have been four for four, right? It would have been a four, it would have been a three-way tie. That would have been crazy. That would have been interesting. I will say, like, but, once you call Katie out, though, you have to pull her up. You can't let her two two weeks in a row uh, talking herself out of out of a battle match. That would have been crazy. That would have been. Like, but I mean, like, why even call her out to begin with? Is no, I agree. Like, I agree. And especially, yeah. you see that she and Josh squashed it, so you and you have a chance to squash it with Katie. Yeah. Whereas Billy voted for you, and she's supposed to be your ally. To me, that's like the always the thing is when. And I said this last week about Jay West and Josh, where Louis was like, why would you take Jay West, who maybe you can work with instead of Katie? And I'm like, because Jay West said he was your ally and he betrayed you. Katie, you knew where she stood. Same thing here. Katie told you where she stood. And Billy was supposed to be your ally and betrayed you. That's who I go after. Like, what's you? What's the use of an ally who's not going to vote for you to stay? Might as well take them out. Um but I do think there's a chance that Natalie sees the divide you're talking about. I think Natalie might be the most aware of it. Uh, and she, and that's why she came after Katie. I'm and excited for Nat. I, she said it. She said it in this episode. She said, it. I'm like, and I think it was like, you have Billy. It's, it's just, I think things are setting up. You have Billy saying like, you need to start playing the game. Like people are saying that. And that is like, I'm pissed that she said that. Like, this is like, I think we're going to see a more aggressive Natalie. I, and not even just aggressive. I think we're going to see a smart Natalie coming in and making moves. That's what I'm hoping for is this battle match is going to is going to get her to realize, okay, I need to kick it into this gear now. Like, I need to do what I, I need to do. I say, in Natalie's defense, I think that this game structure, structure is the hardest for her. Because yeah. I think now – because we know that they are literally sequestered throughout the day that they are only together for challenges and battle matches and things like that, that they aren't allowed to socialize and create connection. This is very difficult for her. I, I, I said it when I said the cast analysis before we saw any of this, before we knew that Natalie's the kind of person that, Hey, you see her early in the morning. She's got a cup of tea. You want to chill with her. And that's where she forms her relationship. She's like a one-on-one, -on -one, calm, deep late night talks kind of girl. You know what I mean? I think that Natalie can create relationships. She would be amazing in Big Brother, I think. But 
in this situation where you're only allowed to talk during these really frantic times, she's not going to be the loudest voice in the room. That's just not who she is. She's not going to be the hypest person. She's not going to be the most seen. And so the structure is really difficult for her to integrate herself. Now she says, you know, Billy, not all of us came in here with connections. Billy did not come in here with the connections that a lot of people came in with. Natalie played more games than Billy. Um, so technically, you know, Natalie, Natalie should have more connections than Billy, but Billy is the person who's going to be one of the loudest voices in the room. She's going to be hyped. She's going to be fun. She's going to be exciting. Like Billy thrives in this kind of environment. So I don't think it's fair for Natalie necessarily to say, Hey, Billy, you can't say that to me because I didn't come in with the connections you came in with, but I do think that, you know, Billy has an advantage in the way the structure is. Um, yeah. And that's that's nobody's fault or anything. I just, it worries me for Natalie because she's got to come back. And while people might respect that she beat Katie, I'm worried they're going to be like, well, that was a fluke. Or, oh, now we know she's a physical threat. Let's get her out because she needs to come back and create bonds with people. Yes. Um, and I just, like, I don't think that she and Billy are going to squash it. I don't think that any of the other people that voted for her are going to feel like they need to come and like form a strong relationship with her now. Um, and she voted for Rachel. One yeah. of the, one of the members of the, yeah. of the fewest connections club. Maybe Josh, I could see your body with, you know, we talked about it at the beginning, like maybe this luxury row, this is where Josh pulls her into a room and they form their alliance based on their knowledge of the powers and the, the fun clear box. The luxury row alliance. I yes. I would love I would love to see uh a Natalie and Josh alliance. I feel like you know you have your team of song song and uh, what is it song of fire and ice is the name of your yeah. team because you you got Billy who's cool and Brent who's fiery. But yeah. I think that would be very fire and ice. I mean yeah. Natalie is a cucumber, right? She's just like cool, 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 and um calm. She's very calm, and Josh he makes. He makes Brent look like an ember. You know what I mean? And Josh is the whole fucking fire, dude. <laughs> like, those are some, that is a fiery dude. Um, yeah. No, I, Josh is very entertaining. I'm very engaged in uh, in what he's giving me so far. Um, but everyone, I'm yeah. this, you know, to, to be that kind of person, but I, I am getting something out of everyone, even if it's, I can see potential, even the people that we haven't seen, like, like flames yet, I see those embers. You know, I see, I see the wood, the gasoline. It's all there. We just need a, we need to give them the right moment to strike the match, and you know, uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, then we get into the battle match because uh, she picked Katie, and uh, uh, Katie tried to talk. Katie tried to do it again and tried to talk her way out of it, but Natalie wasn't letting her have it. And uh, we have this basketball shoot the ball into three buckets challenge. So I it's a it. little bit like beer pong, right? Yeah. Yeah, really a little like bit. Beer pong. <laughs> um, I love beer pong. My partner is also really good at beer pong and they don't even drink. Uh, <laughs> like we go to like um case led number L number uh what is the name of the restaurant where you like drink and play games? Um Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's. Yes. We go to Dave and Buster's and we can play Peter Brown. Oh, so Watch <laughs> Susie. Susie's going to build this in her living room. She's going to get going to get the blueprints for this. She's going to build this whole whole, uh, whole challenge in her living room to practice and play. I with. kind of want to. I kind of want to. Uh, look for that on winter break. I might. Like, right now I'm in the middle of grading. But when it come winter break, I might just do that. But um, that was such a fun challenge. And I think it was really funny, though. We did not see what we saw last week, which was shit talking. Uh, these were really hyper focused women. I, I in a in another world, these women would be allies. They would be friends. <laughs> and I think even at the end, Katie's like, "I hope Natalie kills it." I think that if Katie, for some reason, comes back, she and Natalie could be allies. I yeah. think that Katie's finally seen the writing on the wall that this that her game connections coming in actually hurt her and sort of helped her. Um, and she needs to align with those smaller targets because right now she's front and center of the bigger target alliance and none of them are helping her. 
they're all, they're all willing to sacrifice. I mean, she's. The, I think she was more loyal to them than than they were to her. Like in her eyes, she would never even think about putting a vote, even if you know. But in their eyes, like 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 Brent was like, I knew you weren't going home, but I still threw a fruit. Well, Kitty wouldn't do that. But I was. I the focus thing was definitely something I noticed. I this game felt like a momentum game. It felt like. I, and especially with Katie as a player, I, I could see her getting in her head the minute she knew that, like Natalie was getting ahead of her. It's it's one of those games like I once you once you hear someone get that second row, it's like well, what can I like? It's hard to come back from that, you know. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's and it's yeah. it's hard because she got she got the first ball first, but then she got so demoralized by how long it took her to get the second ball. Um, I'm pro shit talking, so that was. You know, a little disappointing to me. Everybody who knows me knows I love a good shit. Like, that's 90% of the reason I play a game is so I can talk shit about folk um, to their face, especially, and the game environment. Uh, so if, but shit talking and throwing a ball at the same time, it seems very difficult. So yeah. I don't, I don't blame them. Um, and, and like I said, I do think that, you know, if Katie comes back, she's preserved that relationship with Natalie. She showed Natalie a lot of respect. Uh, and I think that Natalie appreciates that because Natalie's not getting the respect she deserves in this game. I am a Natalie stand too. Who don't I stand? Yeah, I was gonna say. Exactly. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Um, I would, I would posit. See, if I was in there, I would be positive talking instead of shit talking. I would be like, "Hey, what did you have for lunch today? Man, it was really good. Shoot the ball, like kind no, of what I'm a shit talker." <laughs> kind of like uh, what Josh was doing with the sandwiches, but without the, like, I would just be like, hey, what's your favorite sandwich? Cool. My favorite is ham and cheese or something like that. That's what you I You mean, like, doing. sincerely. You would be sincere about it. <laughs> yeah. I would be very really curious about what their favorite sandwich is. Tommy, you weren't on this call, but the other night I was playing code names with several of my friends. And, um, you know, one of them... I managed to shit talk into making a huge mistake. So I'm pro shit talking. Uh, the word was desert. The clue was three, desert three. Uh, there were several clues, on, uh, words on the board. It could have been um, cliff, uh, mountain, sand, something like that. I yelled, oh, it says dessert. Clearly it's spoon. And the person picked spoon without even thinking about it. And it was, the, it was, the, it was my team's word. Um, Come and there was no way to for them to come back. There was no way for them to come back. Back. So I'm very pro shit talking. I think you can absolutely shit talk somebody into making a mistake. But um, is this you using your platform? Mark, yeah. yeah, this is my platform to say, do it, y'all. <laughs> to bag it on your friends work. that and to bag on one of our friends openly in public that <laughs> they yeah, make this it wide known. Yeah, my friend. Um, <laughs> he knows who he is. I I won't say his initials, but his name is Alex Day. Pro um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <cruel laughs> shit talking, yeah. <laughs> so I think that, like this is just using my platform to say, hey y'all. It never hurts to try to distract your enemy. Um, but I do think that, you know, they were, it was dark outside. They were super hyper focused and they were clearly too competitive. This is a match that it's the kind of match we like to see two people who are very evenly matched, it seemed, um, going against each other. And it could be one or it could be the other. And I was rooting for them both. So that was really hard. Um, like I like I've said, I don't know Natalie as well as I know Katie, but Natalie pulls at your heartstrings a little bit. She has a lot of self-awareness. She also is kind of feeling disrespected by the game at large. Um, and specifically by the players. And I think Josh is in the same boat. So if they do team up, chef's kiss. <laughs> like yeah. it I would be beautiful. Said. You said it so well. Like it's it's hard to watch her in the confessionals because like she's it's real. Like you can tell this is really this is not the way she expected it to go, and it's it's very disheartening what is happening to her so far. And I think like I'm interested to see where she goes from here. I, I think we saw a lot of her feelings right at that end, you know, end portion. Um, and yeah, I think and then with Katie, I 
the grace, the grace that she gave, like that's Katie though. Like, like, you know, the fact that she, she came, went out with grace. I think Katie had a great first two episodes and who knows what will come from here, but, but Katie, you know, she gave us good TV and that's what I want to see. So, um, that's true. We, we have, had some amazing TV. Yeah. Even though we have lost her for the time being, she's hanging out in the jury room with Jay West. Who knows what could happen? We don't know. This is sequester. I hope we get some jury room like um, feeds. I hope we get to see her come in and talk about it. Spencer could not figure out why he couldn't get on Muna's team, and the answer, and he was right. He was low on that tier list for Muna, um, and he said, "You know why? Because you live in Minnesota." And Muna's comment um, tonight was, or last night was, clearly some people haven't been to Minnesota. Have you been to Minnesota? I have not been to Minnesota. Um, I would like to go. I, I feel like I don't know enough about it. I feel like I know cheese, right? Isn't that the big thing That's in Minnesota? That's See, this is, I know nothing. Can someone, I would like a tutorial on Minnesota. If you're out there. Please oh, hit me up. Oh, Tommy, this is a mistake. You are going to get it. You are going to get it. People from Minnesota are hardcore. This is also something I didn't learn until I moved to the Midwest either. Well, I'm asking to are. be informed. I'm trying to be on their team. I'm, like, I'm just saying you're going to get a lot of tutorials, and they're going to expect you to watch them all. <laughs> like, you're I'm about gonna, to get inundated with, like... I'm going to become Minnesota Tommy. You watch out. That's gonna be my new. That means it, that means it, wait. What's Minnesota's team? The Vikings. Oh, but I still am a Bills fan. I can't. So, um, but no, I know people from Chicago, and I know people from Minnesota, and people from Chicago will kill you over Chicago, but people from Minnesota will beat you up. I mean, like it's real. The Minnesota, like, like they're like gang, gang. Like, do not fuck what with about, Minnesota. What about Minnesota Knights? Isn't that a whole thing? Girl, I don't know. I believe you, but I mean, like she, she, she's serious about this. Like this was not an excuse for <laughs> like yeah. the people who roll Minnesota roll Minnesota hard. Um, so I, I, Spencer saw that as a flimsy excuse, but it's very real for her. And uh, I, I hope that Natalie saw that, and I hope that they can connect with that because Muna is a powerful ally, um, and having her in your corner is. Now the problem is Muna's got Muna's a little bit like me. She stands a lot of people, right? So, um, but you know, in this case, it saved Natalie. It yeah. did. Save I'm glad Dabbley. we're seeing that side of Muna. Like I'm glad we're. Oh seeing wait, the, it didn't like, save Natalie, right? But still, <laughs> but I'm glad we're seeing that side of Muna. The like very like like I feel like. There's a Muna that's like, if you come for me left, I come for you right. And then there's a Muna that's like, but I'm really feeling these people. Like, like she's like, it's hard. And like, I'm glad we're seeing both sides. I really am because Muna is such a, a pure heart and, and a good friend. And, and uh, I'm glad we're seeing that side of her. I clocked it in the first episode. Um, and that, you know, when Moon is giving her kind of package about everybody wants to work with her, they showcase the four women in there. And then we also see it kind of come into effect here a lot. And it's very clear that Shireen, Rachel, and Muna feel this very, very strongly. They consider each other their alliance. Um, Rachel, Muna's like, Rachel is one of my closest alliance ally. At one point she calls her her closest, the closest ally she has. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, when Rachel becomes detective, she's like, I'm going to tell my alliance and automatically goes and tells Shireen and Muna. What she doesn't do is tell Billy. Uh, so that's interesting. Yeah. I'm not sure where Billy lies in this Women of Color Alliance. Now, I love this alliance. This, is my, this alliance is my heart, right? Like, that's the kind of alliance, which um, doesn't mean you're only going to play it with women of color, but also having women of color as an alliance. Oh, that's amazing. But I, I just don't know how Billy fits in because she is a part of that alliance, but it doesn't feel like she's as centralized as those three. Rachel doesn't tell her she's the detective. They have in the beginning a shot of the three of them talking when Josh comes back that she's not a part of. Um, but Billy doesn't vote for Rachel and Billy doesn't put a woman of color up. 
So they're certainly working together. And I think at one point we even see Shireen wearing Billy's glasses. So they're close, but for some reason, I do feel like, at least in this episode, maybe because Billy was the killer, um, Billy's doing a good job of forming other relationships that are keeping her safe. But I think she needs to lock it in more with these women. Yeah. Because these women are voting as a voting block. We, they all voted for Spencer. Uh, and they can be very influential together. So I th- go ahead. And, and and what you're saying is like, we're already seeing that. I feel like Billy needs to get in because I think that the other ones are already forming stronger. But like, I think, I think that that alliance is one of the more real alliances in the game so far. It's, it's funny because we didn't see it as an alliance, but if you take it from the first episode of this, it's like, we saw where those lines are coming from it's from it's from that conversation it's from those that that alliance so um i i like it and it's seeing it's nice to see an alliance that's like yeah we actually have each other <laughs> i like that <laughs> yeah i know it's the purity of it it's it's interesting though because like rachel calls out josh and brent i'm like you and shireen seem to be just as tight of a duo if not tighter like they She's the first person Rachel tells, you know, Shireen is also looking out for Rachel and gets mad when Spencer tries to insult her. And like, it seems though, or at least she perceives that Spencer is is insulting her. So it it seems like they are just as big of a duo. Um, So it's kind of funny that Rachel's like, "Uh, I see a duo. I'm like, girl, is that you? Is it you that's the duo? Because it looks like it might be you. No, you um, never call yourself out. Even if you're even if you're doing the same thing, <laughs> you never yeah, call yourself misdirection. out. Misdirection. You gotta throw something on the other side of the road. But I love that alliance. I think it's at the heart of a lot of what um Sequester has done, which is open the like that's why I came was for queer community and finding women of color was especially close to my heart. And I love to see that that's happening in game as well as it happened in the minis. Um but I don't know. We got to see how it evolves because Muna has a lot of alliances, yeah. and some of those alliances are in the are in are people that Shireen, who is a hardcore player, um, is going to be shooting for. Like Shireen is has never been a player who's going to like sit back and be like, you know what? This is okay. That's okay. Like if Shireen was the killer, I tell you what, four targets would have been up there. Four yeah. targets. And I think like, by Sh- Katie, by Brian, by Spencer, all three of them. I don't even care. Yeah. I'm the killer. Vote these assholes out. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, and you're right. And like the thing with Shireen too, is I feel like people are like, they're playing around her. I feel like no one's targeting Shireen, but there's a group that's just like, Okay, Shireen's here, and we're we're gonna do stuff, but we're not involving her. And Shireen's not a player that lets that happen. She's just not. And 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 I think that's something we're gonna see is like I think what they're not seeing is there is a group that is getting solid, and there is a group that is there that I don't think people are aware of. I don't think people are aware of the Shireen, the Josh, the Billy, like that, the Rachel. Like I think they are closer than people are anticipating, and I think we could see something big happen. And because they have connections to some of those players like Amuna. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that, yeah, that they've got, that Serene is doing, these players are doing a good job of integrating themselves. And the only player that hasn't integrated herself fully is Natalie. And that's why she is the closest to the chopping block. Um, and why I worry for her. I almost would rather her than get an LOS, get a safety from being flop. My biggest concern is if, if Natalie gets nothing, I swear to God, if Natalie gets nothing out of luxury roll, I swear to God, this girl's luck. I will like, I will be part of the justice for Natalie brigade. <laughs> like she's not even out yet. And I would still like, I would like make the t-shirts and stuff. Um, yeah. So I hope she gets something good. I hope she gets a good power. I'm interested. And I want to hear people's confidence. Yeah, I agree. And I want to hear people's thoughts of, of what they think the power, the other power could be maybe, you know, like it could be any, I'm trying to think of like, I'm trying to go back to the minis and think of anything that like popped up that could be, you know, com- we were seeing so much mini stuff being thrown into the lives that I, I will, you know, 
It was her testing ground. Ooh, we didn't what about even know. the wheel of misfortune? Maybe she gets the wheel of misfortune pin, and if there's a wheel, she can take herself off of it. I'm hoping it's the crock pot of power that she used one time. Hey, she, used giant... the, she, used, she used the Suzy lyrical thing. Um, she could also, you know, I'm always hoping for a twist that puts me in the game. Like, I know the season is over and filmed, but if you ever want to use that trust, Audrey, I would be happy to jump in the game. Um, this was actually this was actually my way of revealing Bo- Boo Boo the Clown, the Boo Boo the Fool early. I actually am in the season as Boo Boo the Fool. Um, the episode six, watch out, Boo Boo the Fool shows up. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have any last thoughts before we jump off? No, I'm you know thankful, thankful you guys want to hear something from me, and uh, uh, excited to see the rest of the season. I'm I'm hooked line and sinker. I almost said sinker, <laughs> hooked line and and stuck watching this show. It is uh, sinker, I think. I think it is. Okay, hooked line and sinker. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm you know I am excited. I'm gonna be rooting. I, I feel like I should be like. Like, you know, in Hercules, where they get all the merchandise, it's like the Hercules, Her- that's me now with all my little favorites. I got, like, my Jacob Jones action figure and my Muna Sippy Cup. My dick isn't and- tiny. Yeah, my, <laughs> my dick isn't tiny shirt. I'm just going to be, like, have, have merchandise from every single player in the game. <laughs> you need the Billy glasses. Uh, humble pie, to- Humble pie hat. Yes, yes. Everyone go grab some Humble Pie Pat. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Tommy. And next week, it's going to be Louie and Dash. So that should be hype as hell. Um, Very excited to watch that. Uh, The new episode of Sequester drops next Sunday at 9 p.m. EST. And we will see you all then. Oh, would you like to say Louie's thing? We'll see you out there. See you. Yeah.